<laughs> All right. Any questions before I begin? Or are the questions better left to lab? Okay. All right. No one has commented on my Halloween costume yet. <laughs> Rutherford B. Hayes. I'm extra three forty two from Spider Man. Pardon me? I'm extra three forty two from Spider Man. Oh really? Yeah. I I I would have thought you were extra one twenty one from Iron Man. I, I didn't realize that. All right. Um in concept. And that's a key word here, in concept. We have covered uh, most of what we can do with selects. All right. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't more stuff we could do, and that doesn't mean that I expect you to be experts with it yet. Um, it just means that some of the extra stuff we're, we'll kind of go as we go along. We've seen how to write a query. We've seen how to write a parameterized query. We've seen how to write a query that is tied to um, either a drop-down or a query string. Um, you know, we've seen a number of things. We've seen queries that return one rows, queries that return multiple rows. We've seen queries with aggregate functions, queries that don't use aggregate functions. Um, so there's a few more things we can do. But it's time for us to move on and talk about instructions that actually maintain the database. That is, insert, update, and delete things. And first I want to review SQL because depending on who you had for SQL and so on, I'm not sure, or not SQL, but CISS 143, uh, I'm not sure that these statements were stressed much. I know when I teach it I, I usually give them slight coverage, but I don't really emphasize it. So I want to spend some time doing this because you know, you got to know how this is supposed to work. Even if you use the query builder, which I have judiciously avoided using. Even if you use a query builder to generate statements, that's all well and good until something happens where it doesn't work and you have to go and you have to figure out what's going on. So I don't see any markers I like up here. So I'm going to go grab a marker and I'll be back for a second. In a second. chances that he's a, he is a CISS major. <laughs> I'm saying 50% anyhow. Anywhere one-third to 50% chance of that. All right. Um, insert, update, and delete are the three statements that are used to um, insert rows into the database, update, and delete. They're different than select statements in a couple regards be besides <laughs> updating, uh, besides actually changing the database as opposed to simply querying the database. And the one way in which they're different is they're written on one table. So you insert into a table. If you want to insert into two table, you have two insert statements. They update one table. 
they delete from one table. Now, that being said, based on foreign keys, it's possible that a delete statement could affect multiple tables if you cascade deletes. All right, so if I say delete from poll, for example, it might delete all the possible answers as well, all right, depending on how the foreign keys are set up, all right, or it might not. So a delete or an update could affect a couple of, of tables, but it's only written against one. So if I say delete from this table, if there's a cascade delete, it will take out rows in the other table as well, but, um, you know, it's still written only against one table. The other thing that's different about it is that it's more prone to fail based on something other than just a plain old simple uh, syntax error, right? I mean, a select statement can fail too, right, uh, if, you, if your syntax is incorrect. But that's not what I mean, all right? And a select can produce different results than you'd expect, but that's not what I mean either. What I'm talking about is you have a valid SQL statement, valid insert, update, and delete, no syntax errors, does what you want it to do, so it's a correct SQL statement, besides being syntactically correct, it's semantically correct, it's doing what you want it to do, and it can still fail. All right? How can a properly written SQL insert, update, or delete fail? Yes? Would it be because like when you set up the database you said you cannot delete this thing or whatever? So. Yeah, you're you're on the right you're on the right track. It can fail because of the constraints applied in the database. So for example, by trying to insert a row into a table with a duplicate foreign key or a duplicate primary key, it will fail. Syntactically the statement is correct, it's doing what it's supposed to, but I violated the constraint. Or if there's a field that is supposed to be required and I omit it, that will cause it. All right? Or if a field is a foreign key and it doesn't match up with the related table. For example, in the case of a poll, I have poll and category. Right? So if I tried to add a poll and I added in with an incorrect category, an invalid category, I'd get an error on the insert as well. So that's the one other thing that's sort of unique. They blow up in different ways. So you need to be a little more aware of um, error trapping when you talk about these statements. And, and we'll talk about that first. Our first pass, we won't discuss error trapping, but then we'll get into discussing the error trapping. With select statements, typically, they're either right or wrong. All right? Uh, and you can, you can bear that out through testing. All right? That is, you can test um, to make sure that the syntax of them is correct. Right? Does it blow up when you run it? Yes. Well, then you got a problem. No. Well, you're okay as far as that goes. Does it produce the results you expect? Gee, I selected every car that is of type focus. Did I select every car? Let me look in the database. Yep, I did. All right. So you can verify a select statement. Select statements are relatively safe all right, from this kind of blowing up. But inserts, updates, and deletes, again, syntactically can be correct. They can be the correct statement, but they blow up if they violate the constraints of the database. All right? So if I forgot to put in a last name for someone and I go and insert it, all right, I get an error. Now, how are we going to handle those errors? Well, we'll talk about a couple ways that we're going to handle them. All right? Um, let's skip that for now, though. We'll come back to that. All right? Let's look at the actual... SQL statements. All right, and I'm going to write the general form of a SQL statement, and then I will um, expand it to do some examples. We'll first do the insert, then we'll do the update and delete. And I'm going to do this using the simplest table that we got in our example. That is the category table. Category table only has like two fields. What can go wrong there, right? Not much. We missed you, Chad. <laughs> nope, chains are sneaking in. <laughs> now, that wasn't you walking down the hall in a Power Ranger costume a minute ago, was it? You caught me. 
Okay, see, I knew it. Can you guess my Halloween costume, Chad? Uh, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Not bad. Although he was younger when he had a beard and was shaggy. Well, you, I, I'd accept several answers. I'd accept um, Jerry Garcia. I'd accept uh, Rutherford B. Hayes was the one that I stated earlier. Or even Karl Marx. To go with him, any of those. I actually got invited to go trick-or-treating with uh, a family that was dressed up as Duck Dynasty. And I'm like, uh, you know this isn't a costume, right? And, like, and, the, and the, 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 the dad's like, yeah, mine either. And it's like, okay, well, hey, but thanks for the offer. I, I have to pass up candy, though. The best costumes I saw last year were uh, one guy dressed up as the default avatar for Minecraft. And the guy was dressed up like a creeper. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I just like the, the cute little kids. Like, they have, like, the, the they have, like, the Spider-Man costume with, like, the muscles built into it. You know, so you see this kid, like, this big, like, with, like, biceps, like, Schwarzenegger or something. It's like, I, those are my favorite, I think. All right. And for those of you watching at home, I'm not wasting time. I'm actually bringing down an example from the database. So don't think that I've totally lost it. That will come later today. <laughs> All right, let's look at, or I'll just write it on the board for now, and, and then we'll go back to that. We have a category table, and it's like the simplest table because it only has two fields in it. It has a category ID, and it has a category name. That's the primary key, category name, should have a unique index on it. If it doesn't, I'm going to put it on it right now. Right, because it doesn't make any sense to have two categories called technology, right? That, that kind of defeats the purpose. So that, that's another example of a constraint that we would have here. So. Yep, it does have an index. So the constraints here are uh, every row has to have a category ID. That category ID has to be numeric and has to be unique. And it has to have a category name that's a required field and it has to be unique. So let's write an insert statement for this. All right. A typical insert statement. I'll, I'll skip the general form and just go to a specific example. I'll say insert into category category name values and let's say I wanted to put in a category of web development SQL statement would look like that Insert into category, category name, values, web development. And in this case, this is a uber simple example. There's only one column. But there are multiple columns. It would be insert into table, column A, column B, column C, values, value A, value B, value C, where the things just correspond right down the line. All right. This is a form I prefer. There's other forms of it, but I don't want to talk about those. All right. One of them encourages bad habits. The other one um, is more of a special case that you use only under special circumstances. So this is a typical insert statement that you're going to write. Now, I don't have to list all the columns if I don't have a value for it. So for example, if there was a middle initial column in a name, in a table for, for names, if the middle initial isn't required, I don't have to include that in the insert statement. So you don't have to necessarily include every column. 
Now you might wonder why in this case I don't insert, I don't say the category ID. The reason for that is this is defined as an auto number key, which means that the database automatically generates it. All right, so I don't have to give it a value. All right, it will, it will automatically go and insert it. So in that respect, I've taken, uh, I've gotten rid of one of the big sources of potential errors here, right? I'm not supplying the primary key because the database is doing it. So I'm going to guarantee that every row has a primary key and everyone's unique. So this made my, by using an auto number key, this made my life a lot easier in this part. All right. I still do have the possibility that I would insert a duplicate category name or that I would try to enter in a category without a name. And either one of those two could cause this to blow up. All right. So that's an insert statement. Insert statements don't have where clauses. All right? Because um, if you think about it, that's kind of weird. Where clauses look for stuff. And if you're inserting it, it's not there to look for. So it doesn't even really make sense to talk about a where clause with a insert statement. Now, there are forms of the insert statement that allow you to insert multiple rows, but this one it will just insert one row. All right, so that's the insert statement. The update statement, and it's funny, each of these has a slightly different look, which again, don't blame me, I didn't make this up. I'm just explaining it to you. Up, oops. Update category. set category name equals There's a where clause here. With the delete and the update, there will be a where clause because remember the way SQL works. If you don't specify what it is you want to do something with, it does it to all of them. So if I omitted that where clause, it would try to make every category. Um, it would try to make every category equal to that string. Now, one thing about update statements and delete statements, or insert statements for that matter, is that they either completely succeed or they completely fail. All right? So for example, if I did an update statement like this, and I omitted the where clause, that would fail because it would try to make every category name equal to web design slash development. And we know that it, every category name can't be web design development because we set up a unique index on it. So you might think, well, will it update one of them then? Will it update the first one it finds to web design and development and then fail when it updates the second one, fail when it tries to update the third? doesn't work that way. If it gets an error, it won't do any of it which is really what you want to have happen, all right? You really want these things to either completely occur, either the update you planned works or it didn't. You don't want it to sort of half work, all right? That would, that would actually be a, a bigger issue than it partially working. So likewise, if you had, if you did a delete, and let's say I tried to delete every customer from the state of Ohio in a hypothetical database, and I have a foreign key to the orders table, if one of the customers had orders and I restricted the deletion of those orders and it's not like it would delete the other 99 customers from Ohio and then fail on the 100th one that has an order. It won't delete any of them. All right? 
And again, that's that's what you want, really. You, you might not realize it, but that that's good. That's what you want. All right. So will it, would it tell you if it? Oh yeah. Okay. The question is, is how's it going to tell you that? And better than that, how are you going to tell the user? All right. Uh, because it'll either tell you by displaying an ugly error message, or, or if you don't take steps, let me, let me put it that way, if you don't take steps to give a meaningful error message to the user, it's going to give you just a very ugly system-like message. And it'll just, you know, it'll give you something that to a, a, a lay person would be incomprehensible. So you want to, that, that gets in the whole thing of error trapping. That, that you want to trap those errors and display it in some way that's meaningful. Yeah, we ran into a, I guess that scenario where, where I worked, one of our developers was updating you know, one of our monstrous databases. Mm -hmm. You wrote a SQL, you know, um, I, think, I believe it was an update. That this is, we're just going through it. was updating with zillions of records, taking hours and hours and hours to you know, crank through, and then towards the end it crashed. And it rolled whole thing back. Right, exactly. Because again, the SQL statement either completely succeeds or completely fails. All right. The kinds of update statements we are going to write in this class are typically going to have a WHERE clause in them. And the WHERE clause typically will be on the primary key. Now, there's other cases, you know, people write SQL statements all kinds of places. And I'm not saying you will never write a, uh, an update statement that doesn't have a WHERE clause or that you will never write an update statement that has a WHERE clause that includes something other than the primary key. But when we're talking about the kinds of updates that we're doing, where we're updating one row in the database, we're bringing up the category on our screen and we're changing it from web development to web design slash development. That kind of update, we want to update just that one specific row. And how do we uniquely identify a row? We uniquely identify it via the primary key. So single row update, something to take and update one row in the database, um, we're going to use the primary key to do that. Therefore, the WHERE clause will include the primary key. Now, we for sure, we could write, we could write a web application that did a mass transfer let's say, that, that, that took all of our employees or all the customers in Idaho and assigned them to a new sales rep. So we might have a different where clause in that case. But that's sort of a, that, that's a less common occurrence. Typically we're going to be pointing to one row and saying this is the guy that we want to change and therefore we'll change it. The last one is the delete statement. And that's, oh, if we have more than one column, by the way, it would be update table set column A equal value A, column B equals column B, or value B, and so on down the line, where then my WHERE clause. Again, if I violate one of the constraints, it's going to fail. So if I try to change two things to have the same name, it's going to, or, or yeah, category name is going to fail. If I try to enter something in that doesn't have a category name, it's going to fail. A delete statement is the simplest of all, which is unfortunate because it's the most dangerous. <laughs> And again, we typically are going to be using the primary key in this case. Delete from category where category ID equals 1. If there's cascading delete set up, it will delete all of the cascades. So in other words, if we have a table that's related to this table, that's related to this table, and there's cascade, cascade. If I delete 
delete a row in this table, it will delete all the rows in this table related to it, delete all the rows in that table related to it. Now, if one of the links in the chain is restrict, even if all the rest of them are cascade, if I delete this row, It'll try to delete all the related rows here. Try to relate, delete all the related rows here. Try to relate, ooh, there's a related row and I'm not allowed to delete it because of restrict. That whole delete fails. So again, it's not as though it's going to delete these guys and leave these guys. It will just not succeed at all. That's the deleting of an entire row, not the, a field within a row. Field correct. A row would be an update. Right, yeah. Yeah, uh, changing a field within a row, even if you're talking about like getting rid of a field, like blanking it out, that's still an update because that field's still there. It just has a, a, a no value. It just has a blank value. So when we talk about deleting, we're talking about deleting a row. The other thing to remember is cascading delete goes from the parent table to the child table. If we have a one to many, and this is the parent table, and this is the child table. Cascading works this way. If I delete the parent, will it delete the child rows? It doesn't work the other way. In other words, if I delete the child, does it do anything to the parent? No. All right. And what is the reason for this? Well, the reason for this is because of referential integrity, we can't leave one of these guys hanging without its parent. So if we delete the parent, one of two things happens. Or if we try to delete the parent, one of two things uh, happens. Either we're blocked from deleting it, or it's going to delete the child as well and lop that one off too. So in neither case will there be a child row here that doesn't have a parent when I'm done. Either the, both the parent and child will be gone, or both of them will be there. Won't take out the parent and leave the child. That pretty much is a general form of that. There really isn't anything else. All right? And again, there could be cases, you know, let's say we close our Alaska branch, all right, and we want to delete all our Alaska customers or something like that, or we delete a whole product line or whatever. We could um, delete based on some other uh, criteria, but typically, Typically, we're going to be using the primary key as a criteria because we want to point to one thing and say, yep, that's the one we want to get rid of. All right. Okay. Questions about this? This is either, you know, a refresher or your first time seeing it, or, but don't worry, we'll get, we'll get practice on this. Um, Here's where we're going to take a slightly different approach than before. Actually, I, I don't want to say that now. We'll, we'll come back to that later. Never mind. Rewind. Let's go and let's actually do that. And we're going to do it with the category table because, again, the category table is so simple. You know, it's, there's one field, that's it. Well, there's two fields, really. There's a primary key um, and, the, and the name. But... Since it's an auto number key, we don't even have to worry about generating the primary key. I'm going to pop open Notepad real quickly because if you remember when we talked about select statements, same place it was the other day, right? When we did a select statement before, we might do something like this. Select star from category where category ID 